All right. Hello and welcome back. We just watched episode 40. What do we all know? 48, 46, oh, God, I don't know. 46. We just watched episode 46 Pokemon Horizons <laughs> after a good like two week break. Um, we are currently also in the middle of reviewing Pokemon Scarlet, and I knew I, we would get one of those up this weekend, and I'm um, completely fine with it being the new Pokemon Horizons uh, episode. So we've been deep diving into the uh, the new opening theme, some of the new things that we are expecting to see, and uh, it's growing on me a little bit, but honestly, the ending theme was better than the opening theme. Like, like not it wasn't even close. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of K-pop. Uh, openings one, opening one was uh, more what I would expect from this series, but the visuals are great and the chorus is pretty, uh, pretty hype. So I'll give it a pass for now. But we didn't go out of our way to like react to it because it wasn't, it wasn't anything that we were excited for. All right, so got dark energy, Watt Trill. I don't even know if I have this art. Zangus, uh, Krogunk. Another Curlia. Always happy to get one of those. Float Soul. Uh, Team Star. Grunt. There we go. Uh, we got Lucario. Ultra Ball. Primeape. Okay. Primeape and Dondozu. The Bozo. Alright. Let's see what we got here. So we're going to start with a Water Energy. And this is the Sword and Shield set I still have. So... Not gonna see any new Pokemon in here, but this set has a bunch of cool, cool cards. We got Bisharp. We got a Yanma. Nice. We love our bugs. Ponyard to go with the Bisharp we just got. Cricketot, another bug. All right. Chatot. Galarian Mister Mine, which I don't really like at all. We have this pretty cool looking Ditto, if you ask me. That's a pretty sick Ditto. It's mm, pretty cool Ditto. And we get ooh. We get a Hatterene, oh. a VMAX. Love Hatterene. Oh, Hatterene. Nice. We do love Hatterene. That's pretty a pretty cool. snazzy card. That is a pretty, pretty snazzy, snazzy card. So, in this episode, Liko, Roy, and Dot start uh, their solo, you could say, adventure away from the rest of the crew uh, at Orange Academy, uh, where they are going to take a specific course called the Terrastal Course. And one really cool thing about the anime that the games don't necessarily focus on is the Terra Orb and the importance of it to the region and the overall mysteries behind it that they're still studying and the fact that you have to be worthy if you want to take uh, specifically the, the Terrastal Course. And so they have each been given an assignment to battle a specific gym leader that's supposed to best match where they are as trainers. And uh, we have Liko against Katie, we have Roy against Brassius, and we have Dot, funnily enough, versus Iono. Uh, and out of the three of them, uh, she's the one that's most acquainted with a gym leader, so that's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, Darian, what was your favorite part of the episode? Um, I like the battle that her and her new, her old friend, because uh, she, yeah. it, and there we go, she made it over, she's taking the exact same course. I do find it a few interesting things. One is they... I think they said they have two chances against the gym leader. They have two and... different. They have to. They have like two different chances to impress the gym leader. Yeah. yeah. And I also find it interesting. I don't know how they're going to keep it aligned with the games, but if you think back to the games, the Katie trials yeah. is supposed to be the first gym mm. level wise. Right. And if that's how they are as trainers, I think it's pretty interesting that they, if we're looking at the games, put the other two a bit ahead of her. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah. Especially that's fair. Yeah, especially how she showcased. In that battle, uh, Florgato, I think, is miles ahead, cooler than Sprigatito. Oh, yeah. I think its personality is way cool. I love its mm -hmm. movements and everything. I like that. Um, other than that, we had, like I said, we had a um, the class they took was the first class was battle studies with, with Dentra. <laughs> yep, your favorite Best teacher. teacher. And th another thing I was thinking of in this episode is I know a lot of people. But there's a lot of there's only a few points I notice people talk about with Scarlet and Violet mm -hmm. in terms of the positives. One of our favorite parts we seem to be in the minority is the school aspect. I we I never really see anyone bring it up. So right. hopefully the look in this show, hopefully that brings people around to it more. The shows off that the school part portion of the games was actually pretty fun mm -hmm. because we have this cool looking arc and yeah, I'm excited to see how it unfolds. You got to see the gym leaders, you got to see the elite four people showed up. Yep. Um, yeah, so it, it it really did lay the groundwork for a really interesting arc going forward. 
Right. So we see all four members of the Elite Four together as an Elite Four, which makes me think that Larry's not going to be in the role as Madali's gym leader. Perhaps there will be a battle there. Maybe we'll have like an anime exclusive gym battle uh, with a different trainer. We'll see. But yeah, so Larry, Poppy, uh, Rika, whose voice actor is really cool, uh, very fitting of this, uh, this more androgynous character. Uh, and uh, Hassel, who is one of the teachers as well. We also see Jock, who gives them an app to help them sort out what their goal is. And uh, I've been sort of hyping up uh, myself over the past couple of hours before we went in and watched the episode because th this is where we get the Ash Ketchum type uh, stuff in the anime. They're going to be traveling on their own, no adult supervision, no freed, uh, no to come save them. We have a couple of explorers, and Darian and I were both impressed. I was more so than Darian because Darian knows, you know, the suspension of disbelief is gone with disguises. But knowing how Pokemon always is, the fact that Onyx and Sango end up going into the academy and they actually just immediately recognize them as the explorers, uh, it makes sense for who it was. I'm sure if it was like a disguised Amethio, maybe he could have played it off a lot better. Maybe he wouldn't draw so much attention to himself at least. Um, but Onyx and Sango draw attention to themselves immediately and the fact that the three of them know and they don't rush in, they don't panic, they just sort of assess, okay, they're also here taking the terrestrial course. Uh, it's pretty cool because, I mean, they don't really pose any threats to them currently. And it's yeah, not it like... It would have been really weird if they just ran out of that corner and said, you two, you guys are bad news. So... I mean, they could have. The, the Elite yeah, Four is there, Jita's there, uh, you know, Clavel's there. Like, so they could definitely take those two. And honestly, on, when I, where I looked, the other member, I can't remember her name with the right. Metacham. Right. Know. I didn't recognize her for, to start off when she walked up to Clavel and said, oh, I'll look at this situation. Right, she fits in a lot better. She fit in a lot better. I didn't even notice until I looked at the ending, and I was like, oh, yeah, that was, that was her. So. Yep, yep. And so the three of them are going to be disguised for the Explorers, while Liko, Roy, and Dot are going to train to master Terrestrial. So they are allowed to use Terrestrial Orbs only in gym battles, um, and they are not allowed to battle other students with them, which I wonder if... Uh, because because Onyx and Sung are going to be allowed to have a, a terror orb. That's just going to happen because that's part yeah. of the course. So I wonder what's going to happen if they butt heads and all of a sudden it's a big old fight um, with you know, you know terrestrial energy. Uh, also, can't wait to see what happens with Terrapagos now that they're going to have access to the terror orb because Terrapagos is the source of that power. Um, and even while it's around and out, like the fact that the region is still thriving with that energy, I think just goes to show how powerful Terrapagos truly is. Uh, other thing, let's see, there's some, there might be some other things here that we're missing, just little details, but that should be the episode overall. I know that, um, next episode, they're actually going to immediately jump into the gym battle. Uh, I'm looking forward to them not only fighting the first three gym leaders, but they showed a lot of them and they are sort of hinting that there's going to be more, uh, the opening, uh, has a lot of different sort of set pieces. Like you have one, the Glaciado mountain, uh, you have them out in the fields. Like I'm, I'm assuming that we're gonna get a full Paldean arc, which we did not get with Pokemon Journeys in the Galar region. Uh, so Darian, what are you looking forward to seeing the most from this uh, school arc? Yeah, I'm really excited to see them journey all over the region. Another thing we mentioned was, like we said, we saw the gym leaders Elite Four. We saw Penny, but there was no sign of Arvin. Right. So, That's right. Um, I don't really know what his role is gonna be. Um, we saw in the ending they had Karidon and Mar Maridon, like yeah. the little silhouettes flying across, so maybe they'll show up sometime, and that's where he'll step in, because he owns one of them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, like I said, I'm just looking forward towards their journey, and to see where where they go, the order they face these gyms in. Mm -hmm. um, I'm ready to see Dot versus, I don't know, I think that's, that's going to be a really great episode. That's going to be a really good show, though. And uh, speaking of what you said earlier, honestly, I think that Roy has a much better knack for battling uh than Liko, mm -hmm. but he holds himself back a lot more. Yeah. While Le while Liko well. she she can think ahead really quickly. Royce kinda he kinda lags in his fights. Uh yeah. so it makes sense that in terms of just like raw talent, like maybe Roy has a little bit of an edge, but Liko um she might not have as big of a knack for battling in the first place. Yeah, it's one, just the, yeah, one of the reasons I said well that was in, in that battle versus Anne, it looked like she had much, much improved. She, she, she has a lot more access to power now with uh, Magical Leaf, uh, Sprigatito evolving, all that all that stuff. So Liko might be able to come into her own. Now. For she's sure. a lot more confident now. Yep, yep. Good to see. Those first two arcs really helped uh, the group out a lot. 
Uh, and Dot by far is the best of the three. <laughs> I mean, she when when they had to deal with Orthoworm, she single handedly came up with a plan and conquered it all on her own. Yeah. So I'm I I really do think that this is a good arc for Dot to finally become in just ace trainer level. Just I, I think yeah, she could do it. And... She's definitely uh, our one of our favorite characters, and I mean, there, there's no reason not to doubt her. Honestly, like uh, between the three of them, she has the least to worry about. The second she does, me- she says mental switch on, puts her headband on, like she's she's ready to cook. So that battle versus Aeon is definitely going to be awesome. Yeah, and one last thing, yes. we did see our Bolt Tecker crew a little bit. They're still mm-hmm. working on Yasagi, and Free had this briefcase with him, and we yeah. don't know. He opened it, don't know what's in it. Mm-hmm. I don't really know, but yeah, but that's a little interesting thing they showed up at the end. He it, opened the briefcase and it was, I don't know, it like some kind of clothing item. And, yeah, it looks like he's going know, adventuring, probably. Maybe. Yeah, so. Yeah, maybe, I, maybe he has more Pokemon than just Pikachu and Charizard. Yeah. Maybe those so, Maybe those were just Pokeballs and like a little belt sash. So maybe maybe we get to see some cool Freed episodes in this arc, even yeah, though they're not going to. I will not mind the main together. focus. I'll take some Freed filler. For sure. <laughs> For sure. Uh we I also didn't mention uh Nimona was in this episode a lot as well. Yeah, she she and Roy were looking forward to battle, but just like in the games, there's times and places and it just wasn't the time or place for a battle. So we're gonna have to wait for that Roy versus Nimona fight. I'm hoping in this arc that um we we get Quaxwell and Crocolore. Yeah, that would be nice. It would be see. great to see them all just sort of grow together instead of what they usually do in the anime, where it's like maybe someone will get an evolution, but we're not going to focus too hard on everyone having like a, a really, really strong team. But how great would it be if at the end of the se- series, we do have three fully evolved starters? I mean, the anime is already committed to Freed having a Charizard. Um, we have Pokemon like Metagross, uh, Seroledge. We have a, a lot of fully evolved Pokemon. Glalie, Metacham, like all the explorers have fully evolved Mons. It would honestly mm-hmm. be a joke for our main characters to not develop into trainers that have Pokemon at that same caliber. And then it, they're just expected to win. I can understand Florigato winning some fights. But, yeah. you know, yeah, we, let, let's see some more evolutions in this arc for sure. All right. Uh, that's all that we've got for today. It's almost midnight. I'm going to try and get this out on Sunday. And then, uh, after this, you will hopefully see a part of a Scarlet and Violet review. Uh, we, we've got a lot that we're going to do with the, uh, the hair gas this quarter. And until that next time, we hope you take care. See you later. Goodbye.